we have it checking words. We have it, well, first we have it limiting the input to five letter words. And those are uh, five letter words that actually are in the list. So that's good. And then we have it checking the correctness of each letter, which is also good. Um, although there is one thing that isn't quite right. Um, let's see, the target word is, oh yeah, get, so like, let's, uh, Let's see, what's a five letter word with two, two letters that are, used, that are in the target word? So we, the, if we have this word saves, that's, that's my guess. Um, so these are all in the right position, the last three letters, because the target word is gives. Um, but it's also saying that S, there's an S here that's in the wrong position. Um, and in actual, the actual Wordle game, it would not say that this, S is in the wrong position because that was already sort of used up. That in the target, the S in the target word is used up by this one that was in the correct position. I think what we need to do is we need to take two passes comparing the target word and um, the guess. And the first pass will just look for the exact matches where they're in the right place. And this will sort of use up those letters in the target word. So if the target is gives, um, we take one pass, we find the, these three match, and then the only the only remaining letters are G and I. And then we take another pass and we'll check, you know, we'll check whether uh, these letters in the guess are in those remaining letters, G and I. Uh, so yes, if the, if the guess, these remaining guess letters, S and A, are uh, in the remaining target letters. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so first we'll take one pass over the word, over the words, and just look for the correct, or the result, or the, where the, we just look for places where their exact matches in the correct position. All right, and if they're not, or sorry, if it is in the correct position, then we should, mark that that letter is sort of used up. OK, so there's two ways we could do that. We could we could mark the letters that in the target word is being used up, or um, we can actually just keep track of the remaining letters so that are not used up. So let's let's do it that way. I think in this case, it'll be a little bit simpler. So uh, so there's the target letters, there's the guess. There's also remaining. Let's call these remaining letters and uh, character vector of length 0. Okay, so, so if it's correct, great. Else, um, remaining, and uh, well, we can grow the vector this way. Remaining, and we'll just that target letter. We'll add it to the remaining, the sort of the list of remaining letters. Okay, so that's our first pass over the word, and then we'll take another a second pass over the word. And uh, I guess let's do the same thing. Actually, this looks a little bit better like that, so iterating over the letters in the guess. Even though it's effectively the same, it sort of feels more correct that way. All right, so, um, so if we can actually reuse this code here. So, if the guess is not, or if it's not already a correct result, so we can say, okay, if the guess does not match the target letter here and the guess is in the set of not target letters, but remaining letters, then, then we'll say the result is in the word. OK. Um, and let me think about this. I th we also need to, in this case, we actually need to remove that remaining letter. Uh, 
from we need to re remove that letter from the set of remaining letters. So let's uh, we can we can try this here. So if we say oops, let's uh, run this function. Okay, compare words. Uh, target is gives, and we're making a guess saves. That totally did not work. This logic is messed up here. Oh, you know what we can do? Actually, let's let's start the um, the results instead of an empty character vector. Let's start it with a character vector where the starting value is like it's just not in the word. And then if we find matches, or if we find yeah, if we find cor correct letters or inward letters, then we'll replace that entry. So let's say we'll do uh, rep uh, not in word five. Okay, so that will that creates a, a character vector with at length five with all uh, the same value, not in word, and that'll be um, that'll be our starting value for result, and then we'll replace those entries as we iterate. So let's try this again. Um, pair words word gives and saves. Okay, that's right. So previously, the problem with saves it was the first s it said was in the word, and now, um, now it's saying it's not in the word because that's used up by that the last s there. Um, but there could be a problem. Let's see. Yeah. All right. This is not an actual word, so this would not be accepted by the whole app. But, um, but we can test this out by comparing. Like we want one of these G's to indicate. Oh, actually, that's that's actually not helpful. So sorry. Um, <laughs> this is a total nonsense set of characters. But what we're trying to figure out here is, um, we know that this S will sort of be marked as correct and it'll consume, it'll use up uh, the S in the target word so that this first S will not be marked as inward. But will the same thing happen for the G um, when it's just in the word? Like one of them should be marked as in the word, but in the wrong place, but not, not both of them. Um, but what's happening is that they're both being marked as in word. So we actually need to, uh, if we have this match here, we need to remove that guess letter from um, the set of remaining letters. I always get the, I always have to try this out. So let's say match so the match function. What does this do? Match it returns. Okay, this is okay. Good. That was, <laughs> got a little lucky here. So uh, the match function always sort of. I always have to test it out, and uh, I think this is the right. This is the right order of arguments. Um, so I'm I'm saying like, hey, given this letter and this vector with a bunch of letters, um, what's what is the first position where <laughs> this letter shows up in the second? Uh, in this, the first thing shows up in the second thing. I think that's right. Let me make sure. The vector positions of the first argument and the second. Um, I think that's right. Let me just. So if I if these are all G, actually, yeah, one. Okay, great. All right. So I can say um, remaining. And give it this index here. So I say match where uh, yes. okay. So this is a way to remove things from a vector. So I can say, um, and actually, why don't we why don't we just try this out? This is uh, this is a good good way to test things out uh, in R. So if I say um, Say remaining. I'll just I'll just actually create some variables locally, and we'll we'll test them out in the console. Remaining letters are uh, G and I, 
and uh, let's say guess is just G. So it's a little bit different here because from what we have here because here we're using guess bracket I, but let's just take this code and remove that. So, so here we're we're gonna try to remove G from the remaining uh, remaining vector. Oops. That did not work. Oh, you know what? Sorry, there's a much easier way to do this. So um, Oh yeah, there's a much easier way to do this. Okay. Sorry, this would have worked if it was a list, but it doesn't work for character vectors or for, for like atomic vectors. What we can say is remaining is uh, let's just take all of the letters that are not equal to that guess. All right. Um, okay, so you know, let's here, let's try this again. Let's with some just example code here. So remaining is G I guess is G oops. And we can actually just print this out with this without assigning it. So oh yeah, sorry, gotta get rid of that I. So false and true. So um, yes, it does match this one, so that's false, and it does not match this one, so that's true. So we say remaining, or guess is not equal to remaining, and that gives us just i. And that is what we want. Oh no, that's actually not true. Because <laughs> we only want to remove one at a time, right? So let's see. But this will remove all of the G's if there's one, um, if the guess has one. So let me, okay, I gotta think about this again. <laughs> no, no, okay, here it is, here it is. So X minus three <laughs> is there. Okay, all right, all right, all right, character. Let's see, so we're gonna, we're gonna go back to the match thing. So let's say remaining, let's see, how did we do that? What did we do before? Um, Right, the index was, okay. We did, so let me just do this. We'll do match guess comma remaining, okay. So let me just, just I, G and G, just we wanna make sure that we just get one of them, that's position two, that's the first match there. So right, so then we want, what we wanna say is remaining bracket minus that. Okay, so that removed that one entry, if that's what we want. All right, so let's do minus match, I guess remaining. Okay. All right, let's try compare words. Let's see, we can say that we did that one. That looks correct. Uh, and then we also did, if we put a couple G's in there, we just want the first one to say that it's in the word. And that's right. Okay. Um, all right, so now we've fixed up our word comparison algorithm by taking two passes. And let's uh, let's try it out. Okay, so again, we still know the target word is gives. Um, and when we said aisle, that looks right. And if we say um, saves, great. It's not marking this S as being in the word because we already used it up. All right, excellent. Okay, now uh, now we need to give it, we need to have it keep track, like accumulate all the previous results and keep printing that out. 
So um, let's see. Let's just make sure if we type in gives. Great, they're all right. Okay, cool. So um, let's see. I think the way that we can that we should do this is we can actually just store the results, um, the previous results in a uh, in a vector, or sorry, sorry, in a list. So let's say um, let's create a list called all guesses, and we don't have to do anything uh, fancy with reactivity here. Uh, there may be cases where that's useful, but right now we don't need it. Uh, if we find that we need it, then we can we can make that change. But let's say all guesses is a list, and every time that somebody makes a guess that makes it past here, then um, we will add that to the all guesses list. Let's see. We could store the whole all that information. Yeah, let's do that. Um, Yeah, so let's say all guesses and input dollar guess. Okay, and this is going to be a string. So actually, this is uh, this is just going to be a character vector for right now. Yeah, that's that's fine. And then. What we want to do is, um, okay, well, this is not the most efficient way, but this is how we're going to do it. So we can do a, uh, so uh, sorry, right now this is going to store all the guesses, but it's not going to do anything with them. It's still just going to print out the most recent one. But we also, we wanted to update this text box with all of the previous results. Um, or all the previous guesses. So there's a number of ways we can do that. Um, you know, again, I'm just going to try to keep things simple. So let's, we're going to append this most recent guess to all the all guesses. And then um, let's just iterate over each of them and, um, and do the check for, uh, every, Sorry, we'll check each word. And that's going to happen every time somebody enters in a new guess. So again, this is not super efficient, but it's it's fine for what we're doing right now. So uh, this time I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use vapply. So this is like applying a function over many items. So the items are all guesses. A function that takes in that particular guess and does something with it. So um, oh, and that, let me just say we have to specify the return type for v apply. So format the result, and then this will re this will return a character, a vector. Uh, so each each guess will get this this treatment where it you know returns a string that looks like this, um, and then we're going to get that vector back, and then we have to do something with it. So, but let's just say um, oh string that, and then let's, let's see if that works. So um, let's guess aisle again, and saves. Oh, that's replacing it. That's not what we want. Oh, you know what? I need to use a double, double arrow here. Because I was using a single arrow, it was just scoping this assignment within this uh, this render text block here. So it was, wasn't actually modifying this copy of all guesses. It was just modifying a local copy of it. So I need to use a double arrow to make sure that I'm modifying this, um, this copy of all guesses out here. Let's try it again. I'll saves. OK, well, that's sort of right. It's just sort of sticking them next to each other. Um, and remember, this is a, a character vector. And what we want to do with it is, um, well, well, actually, why don't we, let's take a look at it. This is going to be handy, a handy tip here. So you can stick in a browser statement here, which will take it to the, it'll go into the R debugging console every time it hits that line of code. So let's reload the app. 
let's say, again, let's do the same guesses, I'll go. Okay, now it hasn't put in, printed anything out here, but we are in a console, uh, in our console that's stopped right here. So we can say, what is this out string thing? Oh, okay, it's actually, it's, this, uh, it's a character vector, looks like it's a named vector, which doesn't matter for our purposes. Um, and that's the, that's the content. Okay, great. That looks like that. Now, if we do make another guess, saves, say out string. And uh, it's a character vector with two items in it. And we actually want that to, them to be printed one on top of each other. So let's just, let's say um, paste out string uh, collapse equals backslash n. So that's what we want. There's a backslash n, a new line right there. Um, if we want to see what it would look like, we can use cat on that string. So that's that's what we want to come out here. All right. So let's do uh, let's take this and put it in here. Save that. I'm going to quit this debugging console. You can do it by clicking stop or capital Q, and we'll delete that browser statement there, and so we don't keep doing that. And let's run the app. All right, aisle saves. Oops, gives. Ooh, pretty good at this. 